one. Hello, I'm Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan. And in a year when everything feels so unpredictable, one nice thing is to be with you once again, even if it's virtually, to celebrate Lowell Women's Week. Um, I always look forward to being with you. It's, it's always great to see everybody at Lindsay's and to have a conversation about what's been happening. And certainly this year, there's so very much to talk about and particularly in respect to this year's theme from challenge comes change. And I wanna talk for a few minutes just about some of the things that have changed over the past year and that have really been beneficial and things that probably even when we get to that day, when the pandemic is over, we shouldn't go back to doing. And first of all, one of which is the way we're communicating right now. Obviously, Zoom isn't the same as us all being in a room and talking, but one of the things is it has, first of all, made some things so much more doable. For our staff over the past year, who've largely been working remotely, we've had the opportunity to have conversations with so many people across the country, folks that we probably wouldn't have been able to afford to bring here, um, to learn things from them, to have conversations among ourselves in a way that with a county as big as ours is difficult about the other pandemic that we really faced. And that is sort of that conversation about issues of equity and hate and bias and racism and all of those things that we've need, needed to talk about. The second is what it has taught us about the way we do criminal justice beginning of the pandemic, we met with our police chiefs across the county, all of whom were willing to embrace so many changes. And in doing that, we made a decision that as much as possible for everybody's safety, unless there was an actual threat of impending violence, people would not be arrested, but that they would be summoned into court. It would keep down the population in the jail cells, and it would be safer for everyone. And we have done that and we've done that now for almost a year. We have reduced every week the number of people coming into our court almost by half. And there has been no real change in quality of public safety. So we've learned how to do things better, how to be innovative, how to de-escalate things in a way that I hope even when we go back, never changes again. Another has been in terms of the kind of counseling and help and treatment we so often recommend for people. You know, as I say often, this county, 877 square miles, all variety of places where transportation is or is not available. And with lots of people for whom, even when public transportation is available, it's a stretch to be able to afford that. And yet we often are asking them to travel some distances to get mental health counseling, to have drug treatment, to do many other things. And that's hard for people. And it's hard when they don't have the money. It's hard when the weather is bad. But Zoom has made that all possible. And it's made it possible for them to be in a group at seven in the morning, a group at seven in the evening, if that works for their schedule. So that's been a huge change in a way that we've been able to provide services. And one way in particular, many of you are familiar with um, facilities that provide drug treatment for individuals who are trying to wean themselves from addiction. And that for a long time in methadone clinics and other places, we required people to get there every day. And again, same challenges. You have a job, you have kids, you have to get there. It's very, very difficult. And the concern always was that if we started letting people have the methadone to dispense to themselves, it would be mishandled. Well, the pandemic made us have to figure that out. We have figured it out. It has dramatically increased the people who've been able to get that treatment. And to date, across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there have been six cases documented where somehow those drugs went awry. So six out of all of the people who are being served. That's an amazing change. And finally, just in terms of how we're able to do the court process, many of you might've had an opportunity at some stage to go to court for something. 
And it usually involves being there for a long time, waiting, maybe having a two second hearing after you waited three hours. Well, you know what? Zoom has allowed us to be much more efficient about that. Zoom has allowed people to go to work and get on a Zoom hearing for their five minute case and go back to work. It's just made an enormous amount of difference. So those are things that as challenging as this all has been, has been are really positives and things I'm hoping will not change. And I think the other piece that's been important, certainly for our staff, for so many of our partners, is we've seen the resiliency that we have been able to show. You know, resiliency is a tool that has the power to strengthen everyone. It's a tool that we know can be taught, it can be nurtured, and it can be fostered, especially in young people. And the work we have done over the last year has really done that. And we know that as we end hopefully soon the pandemic and we get back to some kind of new life, there will be more changes. But that's how we do this work. That's how we really make progress. You know, I'm reminded of the words of one of the heroes we lost this year, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. And that really is what Lowell Women's Week is about. It's women coming together, talking about their stories with different lived experiences, all having made progress one step at a time. So I'm really happy to be here this, today to celebrate with all of the amazing women that are participating in this event. And I know that we are headed towards better days. And I hope that by next year, we will all be back together. Still talking, I hope, about the change and the progress we made this year. Thank you.